What's up, a hobby and development fans? In this episode, we're going to be painting, comic book style, a Tau Empire broadside battle suit. Pick up your paintbrushes, fill your water pots, like, share, and subscribe, and let's get ready to go. Okay, so here are all the paints that I'm using for the main model. I'm not including what I use for the base because you can feel free to do so how you wish. And then on each slide, uh, we're gonna put up in the top right hand corner what paint I'm currently using as we go along. Uh, so we're just gonna start out, I did a Mechanicus Standard Gray undercoat, and I'm gonna go in and fill in the areas where the spray missed. You don't want to just keep spraying and spraying and spraying, you're never gonna get in all the little nooks and crannies. Um, and if you keep doing, doing that, it'll uh, clog up all the details. So we're gonna go into the paintbrush and fill in all the model uh, areas that got missed. I did have this in a yellow undercoat. I was gonna paint it a different color originally, and then I changed my mind for this video. After that, while we're on the, uh, the topic of laying down our base layers, we're using Morphang Brown for all of the uh, non-armored panels on this model. So uh, use one, two coats, depending on how, how it goes down. You wanna make sure that you cover up all the gray so we can move on to the next step after that. You guys don't wanna watch me sit here painting for a couple of hours straight. So through the magic of editing, we went ahead and fast forwarded to the next step. This step is gonna be Dragonov Nightshade and we're gonna tint all of the gray parts of this model, make it look a little bit uh, you know, less boring, a little more interesting, a little more contrast. And uh, again, through the magic of editing, we're going to speed this up, get into the good stuff. Why don't you give that uh, shade plenty of time to dry, and uh, we're going to get into the good stuff here. Make it pop with Administratum Gray. It's going to look stark. It's going to look uh, maybe a little off, but trust me, trust the process. Trust it's going to look great. We'll keep going. We'll make it look good. Also, I want you to ignore that purple nail that I got. Life lesson, don't, uh, don't slam your fingers in car doors. Doesn't, uh, doesn't feel good, doesn't look great. Fingernail's probably gonna fall off, but that's not gonna stop us from painting. Administratum Gray is the name of the game. We're gonna be uh, just kinda covering in most of the model, leaving in uh, some of the back, the back paint, the base paint that we laid down with the blue over top of that. We're gonna let that show kinda in the recesses. We're gonna make nice bright highlights you want it to be natural. You don't want it to be straight lines, straight edges. You want to get, uh, if you've seen any of my other uh, comic book painting videos, you know we're going to get it, uh, you know, most of, most of the model, kind of natural flows, curves. You don't want to really leave any of the, the big gray flat panels, but don't, uh, you know, you just watch the video. You'll see how I do. You'll see how it ends up looking in the end there. Just fudging with the camera here a little bit. Get back into the painting. I'm going to fast forward so you can see how it's supposed to look. Okay guys, take a close look at this. This is how it's, uh, how you're gonna want it to end up. This, just right here, you know, do how you do. You know how to paint, make it look nice. Then we're gonna move on into doing uh, the second layer over the Morphang Brown, and it's gonna be Everland Sunset. Do it in the same fashion as we just did the Administratum Gray, except you're sticking to the brown.
Wow, look at that. It's coming alive, guys. We're moving on to blue. We're going to be using Cantor Blue, and we're going to make the, uh, the model a little more visually interesting. We don't want just white and browns. We're going to add the sept colors of the white tau scheme. We're going to be using Cantor Blue as our base color. Put it wherever you want. No, you know, make it natural. You don't have to put it where I put it. Do how you do. All right, guys, so here's the deal. I wanted to make this look a little more visually interesting, so I purposely didn't do the barrels of the guns because I'm going in and I'm hitting them with Everland Sunset. And I think it'll just make it look, you know, a little bit different. We're going to do it in a little bit of a different way than the yellow that you can see there uh, over the Morphang Brown. You know, follow the process and you'll have it looking good just like this. Oh, and I apologize if you guys hear some funky noises in the background. My upstairs neighbors are pretty rude adults, and they don't uh, they don't think anybody lives below them. Anyways, back to the model. You can see it in the right-hand corner. We're hitting up Warpstone Glow into all the recessed areas where you want shield generator glow, engine glow, anything like that. Make it look visually interesting, and uh, it's, you definitely see green from a distance. It's going to look great. Follow the process. You know how to paint. Put it in the recesses. Move it on to the next step. All right, guys. Next paint, Temple Guard Blue. We're going to be putting Temple Guard Blue in the no in the Cantor Blue in just the same way that we did Administratum Gray and Everland Sunset over the Morphang Brown. So this is going to be the blue highlights done in exactly the same way. This model's really starting to come to life, guys. I hope you're liking it if you're following along. I hope you're liking your model if you're following along, doing uh, doing it while you're watching this with a cup of coffee in hand and some Duncan in the background. There's my upstairs neighbors banging around. That's awesome. All right, guys, the next paint up is White Scar, and you're going to be applying White Scar. The reason we've held off is because it's going in all the highlight layers, blue, the gray, and the brown over the Everland Sunset. So uh, we'll lay that down. And while you're watching, I just want to take a minute to... Uh, to ask that you guys really uh, share and, and make sure you're subscribing to these videos. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. Once I hit 100 subscribers, I can make a custom URL for my YouTube page and they'll be much more shareable. I can put it on business cards. I can put it out there. I can make it easy reference for people when they want to see my videos. Instead of these long strings and numbers, I can put in a hobby and development and uh, it'll take you right where you need to go. So please, if you could just make sure that you uh, you like, share, subscribe, tell your friends uh, if you like what I'm doing, and uh, we'll get to 100 subscribers. After 100 subscribers, it's uh, just, uh, you know, I'm gonna keep putting out good videos, but uh, that's the main goal right now. So if you could help me out with that, I'd much appreciate it. White scar going on the model. You can see how we're doing.
Okay guys, it's time to hit the yellow on the gun barrels with a little bit of Cassandora yellow. Apply that, let it try, boom, moving on to the next step. Okay, I'm taking lead belcher now and I'm going to uh, be going in the, uh, the little missiles that are sticking out there and on the little pipes that are on the back of the gun and down by the shield uh, power source for the generator. Lead belcher. Sorry my camera doesn't like to autofocus, but uh, you get to point, you know where I'm going with the paint. Alright guys, this is one of my favorite paints ever. We're going to be taking Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to be going in all the lenses on the model and making it look sharp. Okay guys, Moot Green highlighting the Warpstone Glow. Same fashion, you know how we're doing it. Okay, Uriel Yellow on top of the gun after the Cassandora Yellow's dried, highlighting it in the same way that we've highlighted everything else. Ah, God, I, I apologize for the blurry camera. I'll work on it. It's difficult for me to see if it's in focus or not while I'm painting, but uh, the end product is just the same. Now we're really taking it up a notch a little bit with Flash Gets Yellow. Over top of the Uriel Yellow, we're taking it to level 150 just because we can. Okay, we gotta be careful with this next one. Null oil gloss over the metallic areas. Be real careful. We don't want gloss on our normal paint, just on the metallic. Super careful, looks super good, but uh, yeah, we're doing it. See a little bit of pooling up there on the bottom. I try to get rid of it, it's a mess. But you know what? In the end, we make it work. We're going back to White Scar for a hot minute. Put a little dab in the upper left or upper right hand corner of all your red lenses. Make it really shine. You'll notice there are a couple of areas in the later reveal that, uh, that are not currently red that will be red. Same with the green. I forgot a little bit, but I went back and I fixed it. To make the metallics pop, we're gonna be using Stormhost Silver just on one half make it consistent so on the same half I chose the left hand side of the model and it's gonna make the uh, the metallics pop all right guys now for the part that requires the most patience I'm using a bad and black but you can use black ink you can use ink pens you can use a marker for all that uh, that it really matters because this part is gonna take a lot out of you we're gonna line highlight the entire model all the edges, most of the shadows, and it's going to look uh, absolutely amazing. This is the part that ties it all in together, but it, uh, it certainly does uh, take a lot of mental concentration to make sure that you A, get everything, and B, you don't fall asleep while you're doing it. I add a little bit of uh, drying retardant to it just to give me a little bit more working time, and then from there, uh, we dive right into it.
I want to point out one of the most important steps. Add little hash marks, add little uh, scratches with the ink as you're going along. It gives it more of that realistic, or should I say, a realistic comic book type feel. Ooh, I tell you what guys, I had to, I had to end there. I just, uh, watching me do that all over again was giving me a headache. No, I'm just kidding guys, it's all fun. Now we're going on to the base. If you want to do it how I do it, I start off with Sterling Battlemire, my liquid poop. Oh, that's disgusting. But my liquid mud. And we're going to apply that down, give her a couple hours to dry. Bam, moving on to the next step. All right, guys, Nolan Oil Gloss. It's going to make it look like it's mud. It's wet mud. It does a wonderful job. It's one of my favorite effects to do. Apply it all over. Be nice and liberal with it. Don't let it, you know, get on your model or else you'll have a gloss where we don't want gloss. However, when it's done, it looks superb. Moving on to step number three. Okay, we're going to hit up our base with a little bit of decor. It's going to be an orc skull because Tau hate orcs. Zanzri dust was done with the spray and now we're going in with syrup and sepia. I didn't put the little hash thingy metag with the label on it up on the top right corner, but uh, syrup and sepia if you're doing how I do. All right, everybody, we're taking it to extreme. We're going with Screaming Skull in, uh, again, putting the layer on like we did the rest of the model, except now we're uh, comic book painting on a little skull. Same process, just a different color. Guys, this next part might seem a little off, but we're going to be doing a dry brush of Praxity White. Be a liberal with it, make it nice and bright on top, and there's a method to the madness. The colors that we're putting over top are uh, going to show better when we do a pre-highlight dry brush with Praxity White. All right, guys, I go in with Scrag Brown for the second uh, dry brush. And it really, uh, you'll see how the white kind of allows uh, the translucency of the scrag brown to kind of show through. It looks really nice. And the final step for the base, wog flesh over the area that we just did. And it makes it look real earthy. It ties it all together and makes it look great. All right, guys, you guessed it. White Scar needs to go over top of that skull to take it to the extreme. And then we're going to, you guessed it, line highlight it. All right, a hobby and development fans, this model is pretty much done. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some tufts of grass, and then I'm going to do a photo shoot, throw them in here, bam, you're done. I hope you like the video.